And this is the day that we celebrate Pentecost. Pentecost. Real easy. Take the word Pente, you get 50. It's 50 days after Easter. There was a festival of weeks in the Old Testament, which was 50 days after Passover. So it's always been there. And then you got Jubilee. The number five represents grace. Simply meaning once you got born again, we'll talk about the day of Pentecost. We're talking about the instructions Jesus gave the disciples. You and I cannot dominate if you won't follow instructions. And matter of fact, some people are going to get mad at me because I'm going to make them follow instructions. Because we're used to doing what we want to do. I ask every one of you, get some of these cars and invite people here. Why? Not to have a place where I can go tell people. I don't even usually tell pastors how many members I actually have. Rare. They ask me, how many are you running? I say one. <laughs> one. Because if I run me, I can run a congregation. <laughs> so I'm going to get these out. I need y'all to get these out. But don't give these out in a sterile way. Here, this, this is my card. Come to my church. <laughs> Get to know people. I don't know if you know this. You're in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is a people business. Amen. It's a what kind of business? People business. It's the only business that will get people out of slavery. Amen. This kingdom will get you out of slavery. This kingdom will get you and I totally free from being captivated by sin where sin is telling us what to do. This king liberates you and I, which is symbolic of the Old Testament. Old Testament, I say Old Testament. Old Testament. It is metaphors. <laughs> it is similes. It is allegories. It is something real, but it is a spiritual example of something spiritual. For example, the children of Israel were in Egypt for over 400 years. God had already told Abraham, wake up. Everybody look at the person next to you and say, wake up. Wake up. Now here, here's what we're going to do. I'm commanding that you engage in this message. I'm commanding that you bring some attention and some enthusiasm. I'm commanding that you hear something that you think you know, but it ain't working in your life. And if it's not working in your life, you don't know it. It's no, it's, it's not, I'm not here to help you be impressive as knowing the Bible. That's not why we're here. Jesus didn't come here so you could be a big head person that just know Bible. Jesus literally came here to remind every one of us you're here with a purpose. You're here for what? Purpose. You're here for what? Purpose. I can't hear you. Purpose. When you don't know why you're here, social media tell you who you are. Social media and everybody, Tom, Dick, and Harry, that got their own fads in every generation, that's what people start looking like. When you don't know who you are, then anybody else will tell you who you are. You are, if you are in Christ, you are a child of the Most High God. And you got to remind yourself of that because at times you're not going to feel that way. And at times you're going to be around people who don't think that way. And you have to understand that God pulled you out, separated you, not for religion and not that you're better than anybody. I had a wonderful conversation with someone asking me. We had a funeral and someone asked me earlier. I appreciate they coming and asking me. They, they said, what's the policy for smoking? I said, smoking. I said, what's the policy? I said, smoking. What you mean, smoking? Smoking on the property. You know, you had those, those pastors, don't smoke on my property. <laughs> if I wasn't born again and my loved one is deceased, I may be smoking too. To calm my nerves, to get that nicotine until I learn that there is a God who will give me peace and a spirit that will give me comfort. Until then, 
don't be surprised <laughs> at anything anybody does. So when I shared with the person that asked him the question, I said, go over there and talk to him. Ask him how they doing. Pray for him. People get mad and they say, Noah, see, see that Bible, Noah got drunk when he got off the ark. He did. And I've said this before, but I got a question. Because sometimes we put these people in some spiritual hero. I, I just got a question. Now, Noah was blameless. God chose him. Only eight people survive on that ark. But, and he got sloppy drunk after the flood. I just got a question for you. If all the world died, and it's just eight of y'all left, I figure I'll get me a little ripple or something. <laughs> Everybody dead? <laughs> Everybody but these seven people I'm with dead? And you got religious people talking, I can't believe he drunk some wine. What you talking about? <laughs> Remember, wine was symbolic of joy. Joy. The whole world. I don't know if y'all realize that. Here's the other thing. If you and I don't do our job, how many are going to miss the ark? Who did you witness to this week? Who did you tell that crazy boss you got? God puts you there so that boss can see consistency, see love, because most people react to a crazy person crazy. But because you know better, you know there's a boss on top of that boss, you, be, you run differently. Somebody say kingdom of God. Now I got a problem. I need everybody in the back, everybody in the back of you, if you'd be bold enough, come fill these front rows. Come fill these front rows. Come fill these front rows. Please, come fill the front rows. I'm like Elvis Presley now. I'm going to just stop the message, and I'm going to get every, Elvis Presley would not sing in front of a crowd where there were empty seats. I want anybody that want to come up here, from now on, anybody that want to come up here, just come up here. Come on, let's go, let's go. Come on up here, fill that second seat, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Somebody say instructions. instructions. Somebody say instructions. instructions. Woo! Amen. Somebody say instructions. instructions. Is that seat open? You don't hold seats here. Put your pocketbooks under the chairs. Somebody say instructions. instructions. It's all right, Ed. You good. You good. You good. You good. You good. You good. Somebody say instructions. instructions. Put up uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Somebody say Pentecost. Pentecost. 50 days following Easter. 50. 50 is a very important number. The number 5 is the number for grace. Anytime you see grace, see favor. Y'all see how all this stuff happening? Y'all see why all this stuff happening? These are leadership issues. These are, leader, these are lead, leadership issues. Why am I saying that? The kingdom of God, you didn't, you didn't come into the kingdom of God to say an average dude, average woman. That's not why you're here. And for all those that are saying, I can't believe you're throwing people under the bus and all that kind of stuff, I'm talking to myself. It's time to take this thing to a whole nother level. It's time to take this thing to a whole nother level. I ain't talking about the church. I'm talking about our own personal lives. Because if a person is ruling and dominating their personal life, anything else that they do, they're going to do it. You going to do what? No, you, we good. We good. We good. We good. Y'all notice I must have a strong word here. I must have a strong word here. Or are we getting all these potential distractions? Mm -mm. 
Here we go. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Come on. But without faith, let's all read this together. One, two, three, read. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Stop, stop, stop. One more time. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Somebody may say, I heard that before. I heard that before. Pastor, you preached that before. You'd be surprised how, how many times stuff is repeated in the Bible. Because repetition is the mother of learning. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. 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 Everybody say, without faith. It's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Say it again. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. I'm talking to you, 11 o'clock. Y'all should have already had that front row filled. 11 o'clock, I'm talking to you. But without faith, it's impossible to do what? Without faith, it's impossible to do what? Please, Please him. For he that comes to God, he that comes to God, he or she that comes to God, must, must, must. Come on, English teachers. Imperative and necessity. Come on, Jeremiah. Come on. Must is an imperative necessity. In other words, if you come to God, it's imperative, which is a command. You must believe that he is. Now, I got a question for you. Come on. Some of y'all need to shout on this one. Why did he say you must believe? For he that comes to God must believe that he is. Why do I have to believe that he is? Come on, come on. What's going on here? That, we may, I may teach nothing else. You don't know this stuff because he says what, what God, if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, I said if you believe, if you believe, if you believe, not if Tiffany believe, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believe. That's why you can have two people sitting right next to each other. One really believes what God is saying and the other does not. The other one will be flourishing and God will be working and, and dominating in their lives and the other person will start hating. Because they don't understand the power that God has for you works first through your belief system. You have to believe that he loves you. You have to believe by everything he's created and then gave, given us dominion over it. Before he created you and I, he made everything perfectly for us. And just by creation, he says, you should hear a voice talking to you. When I put that sun just further enough to keep you warm but don't burn you. You need to know when I put oxygen from the trees and I allow you to exhale carbon dioxide. What he's saying is, let all the creation speak to you and tell you that I love you. Well, you know, God, how do I, how do I know that, you, that I love you? How, how do you know, how do I know you love me? Did you wake up this morning? Lord, how do I know you're not finished with me? Did you wake up this morning? Do you believe you can live a happy life? And I know half comes from circumstances. He said, happy are those that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Let's make this a mama-daddy deal. Parents? Yes. I ain't got but one parent in here. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got but one parent? <laughs> Happy birthday, Minister Lawan. Let me, let me break you off something. I think Sister Lawan turned 55. I'm just going to break you off. Happy birthday. <laughs> here here, here y'all go. Why ain't give me 200? <laughs> uh, 
as if you think I gave it. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I must tell you, this kingdom you in, it ain't religion. When God introduced himself to Moses during the Bernie Bush, he introduced himself, as, and God has a thousand different names in the Bible. But when it came down to intimate relationship, it's called Yahweh. Yeah. Moses said, because Moses got trepidation, don't put these people in the Bible and make them supernatural people. Right. They're people just like you and I. Amen. So God, this invisible God, meets Moses at a burning bush. A burning bush. I ain't talking about smoking weed. I'm talking about a burning bush. I got to get all these weed, weed, weeders out of here. So the Spirit of God had me just joke with it. If you know God in the bush, you won't need another bush. How about that one? Is that a good one? Is that, is that another one? Is that a good one? And by the way, don't be surprised, they have to legalize it, because you live in a democracy. In a democracy, you know, all of you all that's blaming the government and blame, blaming the presidents, here's what your country and how it's built. It's a government for the people, by the people. So if you don't like who's in charge, pay attention to the people, because whoever's up there is what the people are dealing with, and the people's mentality. Come on, somebody. See, see, it was good when you could say, man, they don't, he, he don't know this and he don't know that. He's stupid and all that kind of stuff. It's a democracy. The people rule. But it functions. I'm doing all of this to help you understand the kingdom. Because if you don't understand the kingdom, you will understand um, how to dominate in this democracy. You'll let people's personalities and, and what you don't like about people dictate how you move instead of what God tells you. Because you'll fail every spiritual test if you're trying to pass them just based on your emotions and what you know. God know all hearts. Wouldn't it be good for you to, before you date a dude, before you date a chick, God, you know all hearts. Should I even be dating this person? How many of y'all didn't ask God, went out on a date, and five minutes into it, <laughs> you were wishing you had drove to the, the, to the place. Can I get a what, what? <laughs> but without faith, it's impossible to please God. Okay, parents. The $200 gone. It's gone. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> Listen to me, youngsters. This works for everybody. The first thing, let's, let's relate to a parent. God says in Romans 1, and I'll get to it. Romans 1 says you, the invisible things that God has made, his invisible qualities, I should say, are understood if you pay attention to what he's made or if you pay attention to how he's made you. God is a three-part tile being. So guess who also is made in three parts? So the more you pay attention, the more you know how to run yourself, regulate yourself. That God made you three. God is a spirit, right? So you got God the Father, God the, God the, three entities. Now, three distinct beings that only function as one. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? So, for example, God said, let us make man in our image. Who was the us sitting at the table when God is talking about making humans? Who's the us? Jesus sitting there at the, at the board meeting. 
So the Father created everything nice and let us make man, male, female, in our image after our likeness. Board discussion, little Sim. Angels hanging around. Jesus sitting at the table. The Holy Spirit at the table. And the Father at the table. Let us make them in our image. After our likeness. Let them rule the earth. God, why all this bad stuff happening? Because I gave y'all the earth. And I can't just as I, we have apartments. Even though I own, we own the property, Paul, I can't just go haul off in somebody's apartment without knocking. Talking about it's my house. Hello. That's why prayer, 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 without prayer, earth cannot. Without prayer, heaven will not. I'm going to say it again. Y'all sleeping on me in here. Why does the enemy not want you praying? Prayer is the ingredients. It is the function that allow you to know the will of God for your life and for your community. Prayer is not to try to get God to do what you want. Prayer is to find out what God wants. I don't know, and I know in America, in the United States, we've gotten away from this. But children, Tirza, were birthed as assets to do what needs to be done in the family business. In the United States, we got a bunch of independent children. Everybody gone. I can't wait to go. You're supposed to be building nations and businesses. But because we've allowed this independent, this independent, that's why a lot of communities are challenged. Let's get back to Eden and live on top of the world. Let's get back to Eden and live on top of the world. In other words, every kingdom has kings. And my children are under my authority. My girls and my son, until they get married. Hello. I don't know if y'all know this. Marriage is a business deal. <laughs> I love her. She just broke as she want to be. Your parents wouldn't let you marry somebody like that. Well, it ain't about money. No, it ain't. But the late prophetess said, what, lo what money, what love got to do with it? Yeah. Was that Tina Turner? Yeah. Because love is an act of the will. It was only recently become erotic. Love was covenant. God doesn't keep loving you and I because he's emotional about it. He loves you because he's decided to love you. That's the only way you could truly love people. Otherwise, every day they up and downs are call you to love them less or love them more. God wanted to raise up kingdom people who would be thermostats instead of thermometers. We had a situation in our family. Situation in our family. The cousins, one of our children and one of the uh, one of my relative's children, they weren't getting along, had a big powwow. Pastor T tried to have a little uh, reconcile meeting, and that turned out bad. So we went down, because uh, my nephew graduated. So we went down, somebody say kingdom-minded. 
You and I are created to dominate, get this division out of our families, love overlook insults, stop holding people to stuff that God has forgiven you of, show people mercy because you've extended mercy. That's the kingdom likeness. Let us make man in our image. That means you're a spirit. But let me make them like us. Where they love intentionally. They don't love because they are thermometers instead of thermostats. We go down. And it was still a little rocky. A little awkward. Can I preach this? I do need help every now and then. Thank you, Pastor T. So we go down, and the first thing I do, I zero in with the, the cousin. In this case, not my cousin, my, my daughter's cousin. And I begin to talk and just have a great conversation. Because you don't realize when there's awkwardness, somebody can eliminate the awkwardness by just doing what God told you to do. I'm telling you, I, 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 I'm almost sure it grieves God's heart. So many people don't get along. So many people just get so fired up and mad and won't cut people off. The cancel culture. People have done a hundred things right for you. They do one thing wrong and you cut them off. You remember all the bad things your mom did. You mean she didn't do anything good? Of course she did. It's the enemy trying to get you to magnify those idiosyncrasies, those deficiencies. Maybe they never, they got saved but never got free. Do you not give them some grace? That don't mean you allow, uh, what they call that, dysfunction in terms of where it impacts you, but you certainly should be able to love, even if it's with boundaries. So we go down, and I'm talking, and I talk, because I learned you overcome evil with good. It's a law. You overcome what? Evil. With what? You got to do something. Y'all got it? You got to do what? You got to do something. So I went, and I was aggressive, and you got to be aggressive, because I found out one can slay 1,000, two can slay 10,000. So if Satan, and I'm Satan who rule the world, I don't want any of them getting on the same one accord. Because if they get on one accord, it's nothing I can't stop them from doing. I'm talking about Satan. Satan knows if they get on one accord, if they get on one accord, they can cause stuff to be done that ain't never been done. That's why the word devil in the Greek means, is the pronunciation is debalos. To cast oneself in between two to divide them. How does he divide people? Through lies, innuendo, suspicion, right? People want, I, the one thing I, I learned about humans, a human is the only person that will kill somebody for, or want them in jail for the very things they've done. When David thought it was somebody else, when the prophet brought it to his attention, when he thought it was somebody else, he said, that person needs to die. And then when the prophet said, it's you. He said, Lord, I've sinned against you. <laughs> Lord, I mean, he was ready to kill everybody. And you got to realize that's a fallen tendency of humans. Some stuff you got to let go and forgive people. A lot of times they insult you, it's not even personal. They just are professional insulters. <laughs> and they just so happen to be in your neighborhood today. <laughs> And you make it personal. They didn't insult everybody's house they've been in. <laughs> they just a professional insulter. And you done got so bothered by them. And let them dictate your whole emotional state. Somebody say, not again. Not again. Somebody say, not again. not again. So we never really had a conversation as it relates to this get together with the family. But after my nephew graduated, everybody came back to the house. When we came back to the house, Pastor T and her twin sister 
because my niece just pledged uh, Delta. And let me say this for all those that are going to write me letters or leave the church because of fraternity. I've had that before. I've had people come to me. I don't mind. But here's what I want you to know. Your Heavenly Father will allow people to be in different places. The key is, what are you doing if you're a part of these social organizations? Are you bringing light to it? Or are you continuing in the darkness? Our Heavenly Father, puts, Paul was a part of the Pharisees, the Apostle Paul, who were the most antagonizers of, of, of Christ. But yet, he pulls him out. And he uses him to write over two-thirds of the New Testament. Moses was raised in Pharaoh's house because God was getting him to understand the language and being comfortable in Pharaoh's house because he knew later on he's going to send him there. So sometimes God is getting you ready in social situations. And don't let people, I had people, I've had pastors stand up here and say, man, I shouldn't be playing football. But when I saw into their life, they received. Just hypocrisy. I want to tell everybody, and as humble as I can tell you, you can't live long enough to understand everything about God. And you would be foolish to think you do. You would also be foolish to think he works in ways only which you understand. That would be a small, great um, miscalculation. He works in ways you would never work. He works in ways you would never figure out. Some things ain't your business. You got enough stuff on your plate. The last thing you need to do is be thinking about what God doing. You need to be thinking about what he wants you to do. And pray anything else, Go just pray for it. Some of y'all done put the world on your shoulders. Talking about you called to the world. You lying, joking, you ain't called to the world. If you were called to the world, you'd be Jesus Jr. You ain't Jesus Jr. You called to somebody in the world. So we went down there, and here, here's how it ended. My niece ended up, Pastor T and her sister, twin sister, they were walking through the house doing a delta dance. My, my Pastor T's sister hadn't danced like that in years. We just decided to have a good time. And, <laughs> and now I know you may leave the church. We didn't have a whole bunch of Christian music we were dancing to. We were dancing to some of the clean versions of stuff that you wouldn't listen to. It was one of the best times that we had had in years. And I was just kind of observing because I'm Rev. <laughs> you know, and Rev is not supposed to be participating in some, <laughs> such activities. <laughs> but when I heard the song, Jeremiah, <laughs> head, chest, pants, shoes. Head, chest, pants. Pants, shoes, shoulders, 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 head, shoulders, chest. I don't even know the words. All I know is we had a good time. All I know is the two who are bickering back and forward were all together again. That's what he's looking for when you Christians who mad at everybody, won't speak to anybody, and, and you can't dance. Then who want to be a Christian? Who want to be 
a Christian. Be a Christian like me. You'd be surprised what religion has done to people. And I'm not advocating to listen to any secular songs or anything like that. What I am advocating is find ways to connect with people. Find ways to connect with people. Last statement. The people that were least like Jesus loved him the most. The people that were least like Jesus loved him the most. The people that were least like Jesus loved him the most. It is the only thing he says in the Bible never fails. It's the only thing. Love never fails. Love never fails. It's not an emotion. It's not an emotion. It was so awkward without, with the family when we first got there. It was awkward. But I'm so glad favor of God and this girl here that's a that's Christianity man let's get our families back together man That's what he did with us. That's what he did with me. He didn't hold me. He loved me. I had no idea. I'm not telling you to go listen to a bunch of secular songs or anything like that. Don't run out here saying that. What I'm saying is, always remember, you're in the people business. You're in the what? people business you're in the what you got you want a great company study people find out what you can bring to the marketplace serve the people whoever wants to be greatest among you let's be your servant Heavenly Father somebody say instructions without faith is impossible to please God he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of those that diligently seek you. The day of Pentecost, he said, don't, don't, instructions, don't leave Jerusalem until you get the power. 120 of them were gathered. They went to and followed the instructions. How many of y'all know? If they had been in New Orleans, there is no day of Pentecost. They had to be where? In Jerusalem. Right where he told them. Saul, go, go kill everybody. First king. Go kill everybody. Don't spare nothing. What did Saul do? He went, spared the best stuff, and then blamed the people. Irresponsibility. Adam, all the trees you can freely eat. Wake up the person next to you. I'm talking about instructions as I close it out because that was my assignment. Instructions. Adam, of all the trees you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat the day you eat of it. You shall do what? Adam now was supposed to be a responsible man. God initially gave him the instructions. His responsibility was to give it to anybody connected to him. They were supposed to get the same instructions as if God had given them directly to them through Adam. That was Adam's responsibility. And when God, when they ate the fruit, both of them, God asked him, he says, where are you? first person he looked for was Adam. Ladies, don't marry, marry an uh, irresponsible man. Even if he get it wrong, is he responsible for it? That's what made great men. Well, no, I didn't want, want to get that house. She wanted it. You participate. Your, your responsibility. I'm not even saying your fault. Your responsibility. If it didn't work, it's time for you to make it work. Baby, we're going to get an agreement. Y'all know what Adam's supposed to do with Eve? I'm so sorry you ate that. 
This Adam. This is how Adam's supposed to be handling Eve after she ate it. He should have been like that. Wow. <laughs> and as soon as he got that surprise, little Sim, he was supposed to go over and be praying for her. Baby, didn't I tell you? Don't eat that. But that's all right. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Wasn't like he can go get another one. <laughs> Some of y'all missed that one. <laughs> for all the youngsters that don't know, it was only Eve. Everything else was animals. <laughs> so it'd be good for you to pray for homegirl. <laughs> Unless you're ready for a giraffe or something. <laughs> That's the power of prayer. That's the power of prayer. That's the power of prayer. Sometimes we're going to jack it up. But the power of prayer. First thing I tell you, immediately repent. Immediately repent. Lord, I missed it. Help me. Cleanse me. And you know what he's going to say? Let's go. Let's go. Why are you still talking about something happened 20 years ago? He's saying to you, let's go. Why are you still divided with a sister 10 years now? You mean the Spirit of God hadn't told you to reach out and call? Well, they didn't apologize to me. No, he's growing you up. Father, thank you. 